Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day, there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And we're deviating slightly from that today, but we're going to bring it back in because it is, uh, you know, this is a very important topic that we are discussing today, and it is very near and dear to my heart. We're going to be talking about dealing with cancer and working, keeping your business going, you know, all of those various things that happen when we have these nasty, icky diagnoses. And so please join me in welcoming Julianne Pina to our program today. Welcome, Julianne. How are you doing today? Hi, Deb. I'm excited to be here and um, feeling good these days. Thank you. <laughs> cool, cool. I love it. You know, I tell people, you know, any day that I'm not looking up at six feet of dirt, I'm doing really pretty good. <laughs> 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 and the fact that we are here and still going strong, woohoo. So yeah, let me yeah. tell people a little bit about you and then we'll, we'll dive in. So after working for more than 15 years with small to medium-sized businesses in her own company, Julianne Pena found herself being thrown into a very unexpected world in 2016 when she was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer. Suffice to say, her life and her business was turned upside down in an instant. But despite the diagnosis, she was determined to keep her business going. She just didn't know how. Trouble was, there weren't really any resources to be found on how to navigate the inevitable challenges that would arise. Things like financial security questions, team shifts, family dynamics, just to name a few. So Julianne pushed forward, feeling her way through and having both her company and her come out even stronger on the other side. Now Julianne is working as a cancer coach for business owners to help others being faced with similar challenges learn how to best navigate through the changes so they can also thrive in all aspects of work and life. So again, Julianne, I am so honored that you are here and talking about this topic with us. Likewise. Yeah, it's something that not everybody is comfortable talking about, right. and, and it took me a little while to work up to it myself, but mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. here we are. Right. You know, and cancer, you know, it affects all of us, whether we get it or not. We know somebody who does, whether they're working with us, whether they're family, friends, whatever. And it is, it's an interesting conversation, um, you know, because people just really, uh, you know, are still trying to figure out how to, how to navigate through this. Um, so I always like to ask my guests a little bit about how they got to where they are today. Now we kind of knew, you know, bits and, and obviously we're going to be talking a lot about this, but tell us a little bit more about yourself and, and your background. Um, I'm actually going to start in a little bit of a different place. Okay. Um, I, I started my career in high finance on okay. wall street, mm -hmm. um, on, on the exchange floor mm -hmm. on doing, and then moving on to investment banking. And after about six years of that, um, I realized that I, it just was not a sustainable long-term thing. Okay. Um, I, mean, I felt like I had sort of become an adrenaline junkie. And if I was mm -hmm. going to continue to grow and succeed, mm -hmm. I, I would have to, you know, continue that. Mm -hmm. um, and there's just so much more to life. And, uh, and I just sort of felt like it probably wasn't that healthy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I left that, went to business school mm -hmm. and then uh, went into consulting. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, that was a whole lot more complicated than I thought. <laughs> so, you know, if you tell the story on all, all the details, there's lots of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. Um, but they landed me in that spot in, um, the summer of 2016, mm -hmm. where I knew something was wrong and mm -hmm. didn't really want to know what it was, mm -hmm. um, except that, that I did, I wanted to get mm -hmm. working on solving it. Um, 
but I was really afraid of what was it going to do to my business because, mm-hmm. you know, the previous year, um, I had really put a lot of new things in place. Mm-hmm. A lot of things were developing and growing. It was actually a really exciting time. And mm-hmm. I was so looking forward to, right. you know, you're like, excuse me. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Like of all the rotten timing, mm-hmm. this is the rottenest, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, so, but there I was, um, sitting on the couch, mm-hmm. uh, having talked to um, my oncologist, and you know, I had my notebook and all my questions, and I was ready to, you know, hit the ground mm-hmm. running, mm-hmm. Um, and get started on solving this and on keeping my business um, just as strong as I could. And, but he really didn't have any answers for me. And then my business mentors also um, were supportive Mm -hmm. and helpful and did not know um, what to do about, Mm -hmm. you know, how do you blend those things? Mm -hmm. So I really had to figure that part out on my own. So, and then I don't, I really just don't want anybody else to have to figure it out. Right. 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 You know, and, and it is, you know, for, I, you know, people who've listened to my program for a while know that I um, uh, have been through similar journey and it's, it is a challenge, you know, and part of it is we're just like, no, I'm not going to deal with it. You know, I'm just going to go on the way things are. I remember, I very distinctly remember when my, uh, uh, it was actually my, my breast surgeon told me that um, I did have cancer. And I looked at her and I said, I'm sorry, that's not in my schedule. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it really was just, I mean, no, you know, not in pencil. Not, no, it's not there. Um, so in other words, we, you know, we say we don't have time for this. And, you know, and then unfortunately we are forced to make time for it. And it really is a huge challenge, whether you're an employee or a business owner to, you know, because you, you have to focus on yourself, but you also don't want to lose your job. You don't want to lose your business. And so, you know, it's navigating all of those challenges is, is just incredibly difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, there's so many directions I could go with that. Mm-hmm. Pick one, um, just go. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, it's what I ended up doing because I just sort of didn't know was mm-hmm. taking small steps of changes. Okay. Um, for example, um, you know, I I stopped accepting new clients. Okay. Um, and new projects. Um, I changed uh, delivery timetables mm-hmm. on um, some of the things that I was in the middle of. Mm-hmm. Um, I told one place, um, one client, uh, what was going on, mm-hmm. um, but others I didn't. Um, I was on a few boards, and the boards that I felt like I could really work with the people best Mm -hmm. um I stayed on and Mm -hmm. others um you know I and I didn't tell them but the boards I stayed on I told poodles (laughs) well I I, I said something's um you know something's going on Mm -hmm. a lot going on Mm -hmm. in my personal life and I I'm aware that I'm not Mm going to be able to Mm -hmm. um right keep as many balls in the air as Mm -hmm. I had been Mm -hmm. um so you know, I, I tried to pick the ones that were less of a fit and give mm-hmm. them an exit plan mm-hmm. <laughs> so that, uh, you know, we could replace what mm-hmm. contribution I was making. Right. Yeah. You know, and it, it to me, that was one of the biggest challenges also was figuring out who to tell and who not to tell. And, you know, and, and, and the funny thing is I'm very open and have been, I was diagnosed in 2015 and I've been very open the whole time. You know, I've created a Facebook page and and all sorts of things. And and uh, partially because, you know, I just wanted to tell my story. But I also thought, okay, this is a good way to get support. But it was also a way to help others. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I don't remember actually sitting down with my clients and saying, here's what's going on. It was just things kind of kept evolving. And, and I remember one even said, um, 
I saw you posted on Facebook. <laughs> So, you know, that is one of those things where if, you know, as you're struggling with who to tell and who not to tell, if you're telling the world on social media, well, you pretty much told them, um, you know, and, and, you know, and, and of course that's, it, that's, that's a choice that every person has to make for themselves as to how public they want to make any, anything like this and, and how not, but, you know, and, and I told my clients, I said, you won't know that there's a, that, you know, there's a problem. And for the most part, they didn't, you know, I tell people, you know, hospitals have really good Wi-Fi and same with, you know, treatment centers and things like that. We can just keep merrily working along. I'm just not going to be on Zoom or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, good for you. <laughs> but it's, I, I really had not had the common sense <laughs> hit yet that, um, I could structure my business and my life to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so yeah, I really had to make changes. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's part of what I want to help people with now right. is figure out how to be sustainable mm -hmm. now. Right. right. You know, well, a lot of us don't get to it until life gives yeah. us a shove. And, you know, of course, when you're told that you have cancer or any serious type of, of illness, like your brain shuts off, you know, it just, and, and that's, I think that, and, and to me, that was one of the frustrating things because I really did just feel so scattered and so disconnected and, um, you know, and, and, and trying to plan for tomorrow and plan for five years and 10 years, that was just such a challenge. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and that's why the first thing I help people with is stress management. Okay. Um, you know, you absolutely, I, that's a natural part of stress. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a mistake to try to ignore it or cram it down. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, um, you absolutely have to deal with it mm -hmm. so that both your mind and your body have the chance to mm -hmm. recover. Right. <laughs> and and, you know, start to, to pull back in what they're good at. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, you have, and, and still have a team of people that, that work with you. How did you deal talking with them about this? Um, so the team I have now is a different team. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, um, and with the team at the time, because, because it's been six and a half years mm -hmm. now, um, so for me, I really thought treatment was going to be two or three months mm -hmm. and, um, we were just going to sail through, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, maybe a couple of weeks of laying on the beach and then nobody would ever know the difference except right. the suntan, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, and it turned out, um, it took 18 months, mm. um, but I'm now completely free and clear. And um, yeah, uh, my treatment is to live as healthy and wise mm -hmm. as I can. And that's what keeps me right. um, strong. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I went off on a rabbit trail from what you asked me. <laughs> uh, how did you tell your team at the time? Uh, right. Right. Um, so some people didn't find out, um, depending on how we were already communicating. Mm -hmm. Um, and then others, um, I very much downplayed it, um, mm -hmm. more, more so looking back than, mm -hmm. than what I realized. Um, so yeah, I, I just kind of said, okay, mm -hmm. well, you know, here's our system. We're going to need to make a couple of little changes mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and then, uh, you know, people I knew from boards and things too, um, I kind of said, okay, well, you know, I'm going to be less available. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, you can send me questions and things, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, we'll have, uh, uh, you know, ramp back up period mm -hmm. in a few months. Right. Yeah. I remember I had people who got mad at me that I didn't share the information with them. And it was the, yes. the reason they were mad was they said, we could have helped you. Why didn't you tell us because we could have helped you? And, and I looked at him and I said, it never occurred to me. 
know, it was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, there's, I have one very good friend, actually. He's one of my closest friends um, who I didn't tell. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't because I decided not to. Mm -hmm. It was because things were so busy for her. Mm -hmm. uh, and I reached out and, you know, how are you doing? And, mm -hmm. you know, let's catch up. And it took long enough for her to come back to me that, um, you know, I had already been all the way through chemo. Mm -hmm. Um, so she was hurt, but I didn't want to be running around saying, Hey, everybody, guess what? Yes. My drama cancer girl, poor, cancer poor girl. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was, I wasn't, I'm not into the poor mm -hmm. me thing, you know, <laughs> and it can be a, a little bit difficult mm -hmm. to do, to find a balance between, um, sharing without mm -hmm. saying, Hey, I'm trying to call attention to myself. Right. Right. You know? You know, you and I were talking before the program about an article that came out a couple of weeks ago on, on on CNN, and it was talking about this gentleman who is the CEO of a company. Now, it's a large publicly traded company, so he has thousands of employees that work for him. But he, when he was diagnosed with cancer, he was he would not tell anybody. We didn't tell anybody at all because he was afraid that they would think he couldn't lead anymore that he was weak, all of those things. And I think we go through that, whether we're the leader or the employee, um, we're just so scared about what the reaction is going to be. So how do you help yeah. people work through that? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's true. And, and, and there mm -hmm. are several other examples. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, Jamie Dimon from Citibank, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, he didn't tell people until he was done. Right. <laughs> yeah. Unless you see people and you're bald and, you know, getting pale and things like that, you know, sometimes you don't tell people. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. And, and I think there is that feeling of, you know, if people find out, I mean, m the words out of my mouth were, if people find out, I'll never work again. Mm hmm and I was way too young and had way too many uh, ambitions for impact and, and mm -hmm. you know, contributing to the world mm -hmm. that I didn't want to be written off and shoved off the corner. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that is a big part of mm -hmm. why I didn't tell very many people right. at the beginning. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, there is that assumption um, that somebody who's been through something mm -hmm um just is is now flawed and mm. has lost value right uh, and and you know the funny thing is when you step back and think through and really choose wisely um like you for example are just increasing in value um but but well, you are, are too are... Mm -hmm. oh thank you <laughs> thank you yeah, I, you know, I I feel like I'm addressing a bigger problem in mm -hmm. the world now right. than what I was before, mm -hmm. um, and and that does that is a really nice mm -hmm. sense of purpose, right? Um, but but yeah, I mean, it's our our natural reflexes are uh, kind of run against that, mm -hmm. you know, and it's it's a little bit similar to you know when you think of chemo. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, it's not fun and pretty, but you think of the side effects and this and that, and mm -hmm. you think, uh, you know, it's all going to happen to me, mm -hmm. even the ones that are, you know, I'm going to gain weight and lose weight at the same time. Right. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and, and you don't think about how can you deal with it, mm -hmm. you know? how if you drink more water um you're going to have less side effects mm -hmm. um, for example um you know we see images of you know chemo and cancer are terrible we don't really see images of okay yeah it's it's really not fun but mm -hmm. <laughs> there there's there's no reason to panic mm -hmm. well I, I guess there is a reason to panic but there's no reason not to move through that and then right. start having hope. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Because we, we tend to associate it with what we've seen others going through and, and it is, you know, you see their dramatic weight loss or weight gain. Um, you know, the, the, you know, 
to me, it didn't bother me in the slightest to lose my hair. And, uh-huh. you know, and, and, and I had a double mastectomy that didn't bother me either. I mean, you know, it was like, okay, I just have to get through this, but for others, I mean, it, that's just incredibly catastrophic, you know, whatever your, your diagnosis is, because you're thinking, how do I get through this? Um, and, you know, it's, it, it, I think for me, like you were saying, I mean, one of the hardest things is to, to think with our clients, I'm, you know, I like to think I'm irreplaceable, but I don't want to find out that I can be replaced. So yeah, you, know, you just don't want to tell them, you know, because you we are thinking they're going to, and, and they might come at it from the, a good way. They might think we want you to have time to focus on healing, on getting better, you know, as opposed to, gee, you just can't do the work any longer. So maybe it is that we need to give them the benefit of the doubt and, you know, and, and just let them kind of work through it too. Yeah, exactly. It's, um, I think, you know, you can kind of gauge your relationship with different people. Right. And if you have your relationship that, mm-hmm. um, you know, that you feel you can have a good conversation, um, then it's amazing where it can go. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's one of the, so I was on the board of the Pasadena Angels. I was the mm-hmm. treasurer and I told the president, and um, we proceeded to change meeting times and do mm-hmm. all kinds of things. I love it. That <clears throat> meant I was able to be at my best to, you know, to be of, of support to that uh, group of investors. Um, but, but then, you know, um, there had been other times with past things going on in my life where I had seen, yes, there are people who will say, okay, this is too time sensitive. Mm -hmm. I can't deal with your Mm -hmm. thing. Um, And so I'd lost projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My, my, I had one primary client at the, the time and, and I still am working with them because they're just great people. And they helped me get my first COVID shots. It was the funniest thing in the world because they manage high end senior living communities. And so, you know, mm-hmm. this, we started rolling out the COVID shots in what March or April, probably April. And mm-hmm. I was thinking, okay, I'm in treatment. I'm high risk, all those things. I should be able to get a shot pretty easily. And I couldn't, uh-huh. uh, you know, it was, it was, you know, my primary care doctor did my oncologist didn't have the shots. And so, you know, we were still having to be the hermit and ugh, I hated all of that because, you know, even I, I didn't care where I went. I just wanted out of the house, you know, things like that. Yes. And my, my client who, who knew that, you know, this was what was going on. I, he, he happened to say one day, and how are you doing? You know, just, and, and I said, well, I'm a little annoyed. I can't get my COVID vaccine. And there was a pause. And he said, you do remember who you're working for, right? And I said, mm-hmm. and, and he said, we're have, we have our own COVID vaccination clinics. He said, how fast can you get to one of the other communities? And so I went the next day to one of our communities, checked the little box that said employee and got my COVID shot. My oncologist just thought it was the funniest thing in the world because I got my shots far earlier than many other people, um, you know, and, and, and it just, you know, th- but that's part of that, you know, I knew that they were supporting me. So I didn't hesitate to say, oh, I'm just annoyed because I can't get the stupid shots, um, you know, and, and, but yeah, it's, it's back to kind of the friend things, you know, some people support you and some people don't. And, um, you know, it just, it's, it is a challenge because you never, you kind of, you're, you're having to focus on yourself but you're walking that tightrope of how to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and for me, and I think for a lot of people, it's, it's a big, it's a really tight, tight rope. Mm -hmm. I don't know what makes a tight rope harder to walk, but, Mm -hmm. but, um, one of the things that I help people with is going and finding their sense of purpose, Mm -hmm. um, and their, their, uh, um, reason and you know what they're going to mm-hmm. do with this and what they're going to do next and mm-hmm. how it's going to be okay mm-hmm. um and for me that was a big piece mm-hmm. of you know knowing that i i was going to be helping mm-hmm. other people somehow mm-hmm. based on what i learned mm-hmm. um that sense of purpose really meant a lot to me and mm-hmm. i i have found it means a lot to other mm-hmm. people as well um so 
yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, well, and I mean, clearly it is, it is still difficult to talk about. I mean, that's the, the, you know, you and I are both about the same amount of, of time period out and yeah, it's it, words fail on occasion. Um, you know, and, and, and I think that's one of the challenges. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, um, you know, people who haven't been there mm-hmm. don't have the same perspective to just right. kind of fill in the blanks mm-hmm. um, and know that, you know, you need to be reassured that it's, mm-hmm. that you do still have purpose. Mm-hmm. You need to be encouraged to speak up for mm-hmm. what you need. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, because, you know, uh, at the, you know, on the one hand, here I am thinking, I don't want people to know because I don't want them to write right. me off. But I need help um, with this project. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. yes, exactly. So, so yeah, there's a definite um, challenge mm-hmm. in how to um, push yourself enough. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, knowing mm-hmm. that uh, at least I knew um, with you know, the treatment path I had, mm-hmm. um, you know, I just, I completely lost two days a week mm-hmm. because I just had to be asleep. Right. So, <laughs> you know, you can't, and, and then, you know, seven days a week down to five, well, it wasn't that anymore either. Mm-hmm. You know, I needed to have time for, you know, the, the special kinds of foods mm-hmm. and the exercises I needed to do. And, and, you know, eight hours a night was not enough anymore. Right. You know, even on the days that I was mm-hmm. up and working. So. Yeah. You know, and, and I think one of the hardest things for me, at least was acknowledging those limitations. You know, I wanted to just keep powering on through and then I would get annoyed, angry, you know, all of those various things when I couldn't. And typically what I would do is I'd go too far. And then I, then I'd lose several days because, you know, I had gone too far and, and, you know, it's, that's, that's one of the challenges also is, you know, knowing, okay, we have limitations now and it doesn't mean we're weaker. It doesn't mean there's a, it really doesn't mean there's a problem. It just means that things have changed. Yeah, exactly. And you have to sort of reconfigure how you do things Mm -hmm. um, to work. Mm -hmm. And it, and it does work, but yes, I mean, a lot of us have the tendency, and I think it's a, a general social tendency, mm-hmm. whether you know you've had cancer or not, or mm-hmm. e- have ever had any kind of a health mm-hmm. setback. We push ourselves too far, mm-hmm. and some of us, it's not as obvious afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's part of why we're struggling mm-hmm. um, economically. Mm-hmm. is that all of us are in the habit of mm-hmm. pushing ourselves too right. far and then having to try to scramble and try to mm-hmm. recover, which is not, it's not being your best. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's, that's sort of part of a bigger con- mm-hmm. uh, conversation that I'd really like to contribute mm-hmm. to is uh, how do we calm down just a bit mm-hmm. and, and, take a minute to think, okay, how can I be more valuable Mm -hmm. instead of how can I try to look just like everybody else, Mm -hmm. you know, in terms of my actions and my, you know, FaceTime at the desk Mm -hmm. in the office and Mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite things that goes floating across social media often is, you know, the, the thing that says, you know, smile at someone because you don't know what they're going through. Right. And, and I mean, it's like, I, I, you know, I still have a handicap sticker on my, actually I have a handicap plate on my, my pickup and, and, you know, and I usually don't use it. I mean, you know, more than anything, I know the exercise is good for me and, you know, and, and, but there are times where, okay, if it's pouring rain or a hundred degrees, I might not want to walk from the back of the parking lot, or if I'm just not feeling up to it, um, you know, and, and, but there have been times where, you know, I've gotten the side eye from people. Well, you look fine. You don't look like you need a handicapped plate. And so, but that's also made me realize that I shouldn't be giving people the side eye either, right? Because we do, we kind of, you know, somebody parks in a handicapped spot and we're like, what's their problem? Well, you know, it may very well be something that is not visible. 
Um, right. You know, and, and, and also we don't know what people are going through from a mental health perspective. You know, the person mm-hmm. who serves you the coffee at Starbucks might be going through something that's just devastating, but they're still there. They're still trying to do their job. And so smiling at them and saying, thank you, have a great day. You know, it might be the best thing that happens to them all day. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you'll both walk away from that moment, Mm -hmm. you know, 1% happier. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's studies that show that Mm -hmm. happier is also more productive and Mm -hmm. everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and one of the things that, that I also tell people is we, you know, and, and you, you alluded to this, we do have to be truthful. Um, you know, I, I, you give presentations, I give presentations. And one of the ones I do is on, I'm not fine, you know, and, and because how many times in, um, you know, whether you're at the doctor, whether you're talking to your friend, how are you doing? Fine. Right. That word just pops out of our mouth and, and we could be ready to run a marathon or we could be ready to die. And we're still telling people, fine. <laughs> you know? And so right. we have exactly. to stand up for ourselves to say, I'm doing okay. It's a little bit slower day, um, you know, or I really am doing fantastic today. You know, all of those things. It's it's just yeah. so important to share that with people. Yeah, exactly. And, and it gives everybody room to respond to one another better, mm-hmm. as well as to just stop pressuring ourselves mm-hmm. so much. Because if I'm fine, then you also have to be fine. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, and you, you better not let down your guard and say, you know, I'm going to be on this podcast tomorrow and I'm really excited about it, Mm -hmm. but it's made me a little jittery and I'm not getting so much work done that, you know, which was me yesterday afternoon. You know, and and it's okay. I mean, that, and I think that's the thing that we all have to get over is whatever we're feeling, it's okay because it's our feeling, you know, it's not anybody, it's us. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the people I was working with in, instead of judging me, were like, mm-hmm. Oh, that's really exciting. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, gave encouragement and, you know, reminded me to take a minute to breathe before we pushed play. <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's funny. I was a guest on somebody else's podcast earlier today. Now, uh-huh. if if this airs when it's scheduled to air, you are at, at episode 848. So we've been doing this a long time. So I've been yeah. doing this a long time. I was nervous before I was the guest this morning. You know, I'm thinking, oh my, because, you know, you want it to go well, you want it to go well for, you know, and, and, yeah, and, and, you know, it's, it's kind of, I think it was like Barbara Streisand who said, you know, she always would throw up before a performance because her adrenaline would get to, to going so much, but it also made her be better because she yes. got a little amped up rather than blase. And, and we've all seen the people who have been, you know, this is my 900th time to do this and okay, fine, whatever. Um, you know, and, and so, but yeah, you know, we have to own our feelings and realize there is nothing wrong with them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you, if you own them and work with them, Mm -hmm. it's pretty amazing what we can Mm -hmm. accomplish. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I mean, that's, Mm -hmm. I've, I've kind of gotten on a roll with my work and, um, been able to really create something that Mm -hmm. I think, uh, will help people. I mean, you don't even have to have cancer. Right, right. So tell us more about that. You know, in, in your intro, I said that you're a cancer coach for business owners. So what does that mean? What, what How are you helping folks? Okay. So the paid work that I do is with the business owners who really okay. have the ability to um, you see the ROI. Okay. And um, that is... It, helping them, as I mentioned before, um, get dealing with the stress, Mm -hmm. um, prioritizing, streamlining their business. Mm -hmm. Um, the consulting that I had have done for about 20 years now has been all about streamlining and simplifying (coughs) Mm -hmm. the back end of the business, Mm -hmm. um, and making sure everything's in place so that, you know, whatever happens, um, people are resilient and, you know, the company can be resilient. 
Um, even if you know your best salesperson decides they want to become a digital nomad, it's okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? um, so the stress management, the um, prioritization, mm-hmm. the team um, reorganization, um, and then um, just understanding yourself and the business and the team and mm-hmm. sort of really dive into, you know, your personal wiring mm-hmm. um, and what it means mm-hmm. and how to use it to be um, at your most effective. Um, so, and then I just help people build those habits and, uh, you know, give them the support they need mm-hmm. to be able to adjust as things change because mm-hmm. it is one of the very few constants is mm-hmm. change. Right, right. <laughs> Do you find that business owners, managers, bosses, whoever, are hesitant to ask their employees, you know, hey, Julianne, is there a problem? Because they're thinking, okay, am I going to cross one of those HR boundaries? You know, I can't, I like, I couldn't say, are you pregnant? <laughs> you know, I mean, those are definitely, <laughs> you know, and, and so is that part of the issue is, is we're just, we hesitate to ask because we don't, we don't want to cross those legal and ethical boundaries. Yeah. Um, and I think that because of that, we really have to come at it from a different angle okay. of um, just supporting people mm-hmm. in general uh-huh. um, and not, not singling out mm-hmm. an individual. Um, yeah. The, the, business owner and team dynamic is so messy Mm -hmm. um, around these things, especially if you wait until there's a problem Mm -hmm. to try to solve it. Mm -hmm. Um, If you lay groundwork ahead of time um, and just, you know, you try to help your people Mm -hmm. um, be healthier and more productive, Mm -hmm. try to help yourself be healthier Mm -hmm. and more productive. Um, You know, it's, We tend to push our people, at least, you know, in, in a physical office setting, Mm -hmm. we tend to push them to be, you know, here by a certain time, stay until a certain time, all of those kinds Mm -hmm. of things. Um, And then as business owners, we push ourselves even harder. Right. Because how can we ask them to do that? Yeah. I, I, I can't leave the office (laughs) before they do. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um. And it, it's really a very unhealthy cycle. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what we need to do is just head back in the other direction, mm-hmm. um, starting before something, you know, life hits you in the head with a tube mm-hmm. <laughs> is, you know, what I, what I really recommend. Although, you know, obviously um, most of what I help people with is after something Mm -hmm. really scary has happened. Um, Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, the, the, the business owners that I talk with, you know, there is that fine line between, you know, here we go back on that fine line again, you know, are they the boss? Are they the owner? Are they the friend? You know, and, and we're told that, you know, it, it really is healthy for us to be friendly with those who are working for us. But friends, that sometimes that gets a little touchy, um, you know, and <clears throat> so you want people, as you were saying, you know, in just in general, you know, you want your staff to know they can come to you and, and tell you those things, but you don't want them coming and giving you every single detail of things that you don't care about. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's that's the other right. thing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, it, it's um people who often end up feeling like their staff comes to them with every little problem Mm -hmm. and, you know, they spend all day being a firefighter. Mm -hmm. um, And the solution to that is not so different Mm -hmm. from the solution to having them bring, you know, um, health or other kinds of personal Mm -hmm. concerns is to, you know, respond well Mm -hmm. um, when with the little things, the Mm day-to-day things right, and keep encouraging them Mm -hmm. to bring them. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then also being a little bit vulnerable mm-hmm. yourself. Um, so, but, but, you know, finding that point of not too vulnerable. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was like, you know, I was saying with the, the gentleman at the CNN article, you know, he, he did not want to tell his, his employees 
that there was an issue because he felt that, you know, they would all think, well, I can't, he can't do the work, you know, and, and <clears throat> all of those things. And, you know, it's, yeah. it, it is, it's, it's just, it's, it's a very scary thing to navigate through. Yeah, exactly. And yet at the same time, you know, it's absolutely true what you said, we will get help if we, um, if we ask for it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think the key is just to find, you know, your own comfort level mm -hmm. about um, what you feel confident talking mm -hmm. with people about mm -hmm. and, and then go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's, there's, there are folks who say that, you know, go ahead and put it all out there and it's fine. Mm -hmm. And for them, it probably is right <laughs> because mm -hmm. they're confidently going forth mm -hmm. and they're planning accordingly and they're mm -hmm. telling people what needs to happen um, to, to match up with that. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, how do you also work with a colleague who is dealing with cancer? You know what, because that's, that's, you know, it's, it's not just, Hey, how's the boss going to handle it? It's, you know, how are the people that, you know, how, if you're working with somebody, how do you help them? Yeah. Um, clear communication, um, mm -hmm. asking questions, offering, but not too, too much. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just at questions that open the door and let them, mm -hmm. uh, you know, share what's working for them, mm -hmm. um, or, or what they need. Um, you know, just letting someone know, okay, mm -hmm. you know, I'm happy to help. Um, you know, what tasks are, um, you know, you're not enjoying mm -hmm. or what tasks worry you mm -hmm. and how can I help with that? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's easy to be too vague and say, well, let me know what you want. Right. And, mm -hmm. You know, you have enough to think about already mm -hmm. instead of not coming up with, you know, how you want to delegate mm -hmm. to them. But, um, but, uh, you know, a more thoughtful conversation where mm -hmm. you're actually prompting and helping them to mm -hmm. say, hey, you know, what what worries you mm -hmm. um, and how can I make that less worrisome mm -hmm. for you? Um, that's, you know, absolutely helpful. Right. Um, you know, and I love that you mentioned being vague because we want to mm -hmm. help, but we don't know how to help. So we do the Tell us if there's anything you need. Right. I don't know. <laughs> you know? And, and I need everything. And I'm yeah. not going to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Because then I'm going to scare you off. And so it's funny. I posted on our, our Facebook group today because I have one, you know, for this, this issue. And, and it said, you know, offer to drive somebody to their appointment yes. and, and go in if they want you to. And, and it's funny. Mm -hmm. And I've, you know, I had other posts about this too, because you know, and, and then in the comment section, I said, you know, if you know someone has an appointment coming up, just offer, hey, can I drive you? Because they're probably not going to ask. And, you know, because they don't want to be a bother. They don't want to intrude, you know, because that's the that's the whole thing when when we're going through this. And and I was funny, my Facebook memories, I, it popped up yesterday, I think, where I did a post. Now, I spent I had massive complications. And um, my first chemo put me in ICU and the hospital for seven weeks, one treatment. It, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And so when I finally got out of the hospital, they, everybody said, you need exercise, you need exercise. Now this is pre COVID. So my husband was in his office. And so my Facebook post said, for my Atlanta friends, can somebody come and walk me? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you know, it only needs to be 15 minutes. Whenever works for you works for me because, you know, I needed just to, to get out and walk and, you know, and, and, and it was the funniest thing because so many people responded and said, oh my gosh, yes, because we were wondering how we could help. So they would come yes. and they would walk me and we'd go, you know, 15 minutes and then 16 minutes and, you know, and, and but yeah, it was. Yep. But most of the time, like you said, you know, as the patient, we're, we don't say, hey, we need X. And the really right. bad part is sometimes we expect people to read our minds. Well, why didn't they know I needed to drive? Or why didn't they know I needed somebody to pick up groceries for me? And, you know, all those things, you know, they should have assumed I couldn't do it, right? And we put our hands on our hips and we go, well, they should have known that. <laughs> well, they're not psychic either. Right, exactly. Yeah, and... 
you know, as a friend to someone who mm-hmm. is going through cancer, you don't want to intrude too much mm-hmm. on them. Right. You know, it's, it's, you know, some people will give you way too much advice and mm-hmm. some people mm-hmm. will hang back too much. Right. Um, and so it's, it's a little bit difficult for that mm-hmm. friend as well mm-hmm. to, to say, and I think that the, the answer to that is probably sort of a little bit of specificity, but not too much. Right. Like, you know, um, with the driving you to treatment example, mm-hmm. um, to just say, Hey, you know, if you ever need a ride somewhere, mm-hmm. you know, right. I'm really good on Mondays and Tuesdays. Mm-hmm. Now it's not pushy, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. it's, it's specific enough that the person mm-hmm. can ask for what they need. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and I love the idea of saying, could you walk me? I, or, I almost or... got a leash. I mean, you know, we just thought it was the funniest thing. <laughs> Yes. And that was super valuable for me too, mm-hmm. by the way. So mm-hmm. anybody who's wondering, that's right. it, that's a, a really common mm-hmm. um valuable need. Mm-hmm. I've I've even heard of people who like they're new in town mm-hmm. and so they don't have friends. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, all the rotten times to get a diagnosis. I know. Mm-hmm. Um, but but actually like putting on Facebook, mm-hmm. hey, who is going to walk their dog and can I come too? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, So, so it's okay from the person in treatment side Mm -hmm. also Mm -hmm. to ask in a way that's specific enough that people can raise their hand, Mm -hmm. but not so, you know, clamoring Mm -hmm. (laughs) that that you feel awkward about Uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it was fun because, people sent things, you know, and, and, Mm -hmm. and it was very interesting, you know, because, you know, it was like we were saying, some people can deal with it. Some people can't. And, and I heard from people who I didn't even know I existed, um, you know, and, and I, I have some things that they sent that I will treasure until the day I die. I mean, like some prayer shawls Mm -hmm. and one of my favorites, oh my gosh, this is one of my favorite gifts that I got in the whole world was this woman who, I, we're like Facebook friends. I mean, you know, and, and never met each other in person, all these things. And, and one day I opened this box and there was a handmade teddy bear in the box. And the note mm. said, my church choir prayed over this. Now, as someone who sang in the church choir for many years, there was nothing that was going to mean more than that. I mean, and, and she had no idea. I mean, it was just... And, you know, so, so it's funny because that bear is put in a place where none of my dogs, none of my cats get anywhere near it because I don't want them doing anything to it. But, you know, and, and littler things like um, several people sent like little angel tokens and, and things like that, which sounds kind of silly. They were always in my pocket, you know, anytime I went for something and, and I told people, I said, I didn't feel alone when I had that, you know, because I had that little piece that you sent me in, in my pocket. And so I knew that, you know, and, and, and I, that's, that's the whole thing when we're going through this is we do feel totally alone, totally by ourselves, And so just knowing that people are thinking about you helps you get through that. Um, but, and then I had people who sent food, which it was great food. I could never eat it. My husband thought it was the greatest thing in the world because he got dinner that night. But, um, yep. you know, and, and so you might want to check on things like that and say, hey, you know, I, I was thinking of sending you, you know, some meals. You know, are there things that you can't eat? Because what it was, was it was just way too spicy for me. Um, you know, and and when yes. you're going through chemo, your taste buds do wackadoodle things, you know, not the least of which is, you know, in many cases you are getting very nauseous. So, you know, but, it, but it, it's, it's also okay to say, Hey, can we do something for your family? You know, you might not be up to cooking. Can I, you know, can I come and take the kids for a ride? Can I make sure that your husband has dinner for a week by doing some frozen meals? I mean, you know, just all of those yeah. things, you know, think outside the box and think, you know, but if it was me, what would I want? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and then go ahead and ask the question. Cause right. like you mentioned, you know, it's um, that spicy thing mm-hmm. is pretty common, right? You know, mm-hmm. people who love spice mm-hmm. at other times 
then, you know, during chemo or radiation mm-hmm. or something, you might become mm-hmm. much more sensitive. Right. I um, mean, your system just won't take mm-hmm. it. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, but, but, you know, then there, there are husbands and kids and others who benefit mm-hmm. as well. So, right. You know. Yeah. When I was, was sick, um, my aunt and uncle, my mom came and stayed long-term, um, but my aunt and uncle came a couple of times. And the cool thing about having my uncle here was he ran all the errands for my husband that he hadn't been able to run. And, you know, and, and, and it was just, you know, he'd never driven in Atlanta. So this was, I'm sure a big challenge, but that was just how he could best help. You know, he went and did those things. Like one of the things that we had happen, we had um, our main water main into the house broke, you know, they look out and there's a lake. (laughs) And he was like, Oh, this is not good. And so he was the person who dealt with that. Um, you know, and, and so, yeah, you never know how, you know, just saying, you know, and, but like we said, you know, don't be vague. What can I do? You know, say, Hey, can, you know, are there errands you need me to run? You know, I know you've got this work project. How can I help you with it? Um, you know, and, and things like that. I mean, it's just, we, we, we aren't mind readers. Right. Exactly. Yeah. On either side. So, yeah. So being specific and, and just offering, um, and, and positive things too, mm-hmm. you know, like, like you were saying about, can mm-hmm. I take your kids for a ride mm-hmm. or, um, <clears throat> or going to someone and saying, Hey, you know, I, um, I wonder if you would share a few thoughts on this project that I'm working on. Mm. Okay. It, it, you know, when somebody came mm-hmm. to me mm-hmm. and said that, you I know, that. It, it might have mm-hmm. been five minutes worth of effort, mm-hmm. but it felt so mm-hmm. good right. to know that, you know, that I was still, mm-hmm you know, a part of the team. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, it was a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's funny. We all, you know, we want to say the positive things to people, you know, and, and, but I'm not the positive person, you know, I'm, I, we, I'm a very positive person, but you, if somebody tells me and, and I get, you know, several people a week that are saying my friend, me have been diagnosed and I'm Uh not the person that's going to say, you'll get through this. Oh, first words out of my mouth were, oh, oh <clears throat> bad words, <laughs> right? Things that we can't say on the air. And and I do I tell them, you know, I'm sorry, it sucks. And I'm not going to yeah. tell you the, the pretty happy things. I'll say those later. But initially yeah. it's like, oh my God, well, that's just horrible. Um, you know, and, and, right. and people are like, oh my, I can't, you know, and, and, and I've also told people, I had one person and she was kind of a, you know, she, she was one on uh, Facebook who was always, woe is me. Oh, woe is me. And so part of it was, we, uh-huh. you know, people were, I know people were ignoring her because she was, oh, woe is me. But um, she and I were good enough friends that I finally contacted her and I said, hey, buck up. And she kind of paused and she said, oh my God, I have been whining a lot, haven't I? <laughs> you know, I said, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so it's kind of, you have to know, you know, I mean, there are some people I wouldn't say that to and, and, um, you know, and, and, and yeah, but yeah, I am the person that's going to say this sucks. This is, you know, and, and, and how can I help you get through it? I mean, you know, that's, that's the other thing is, you know, the, the hearts and flowers and, oh, that's nice. But again, it's, you know, what can I do to help you? Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's toxic positivity is, Mm -hmm. is one of the hard things sometimes Mm -hmm. with cancer. Right. Um, Because, because yes, it is scary and it Mm -hmm. hurts and we really need Mm -hmm. to um, allow that to be, Mm -hmm. because if you try to pretend it's not so it's, I mean, medically Mm -hmm. um, undermines everything you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But, you know, and, um, and be prepared for the fact that yeah, they might have a problem, you know, and, and, and they might get very emotional. I've had that happen, you know, several times where people just, you know, there, I looked really bad for a while. I was bald. I had a nasal tube, all sorts of yeah. stuff. I looked <laughs> really bad. And this person walked in and burst into tears and I'm thinking, oh God, I must look a lot worse than I thought I did. Um, but she had just found out that someone she knew was diagnosed. I mean, like an hour before. And so her mind just went into these horrible, awful places. Uh, and, um, yeah. but, but it was important that she felt that emotion. 
I mean, you know, she, that was, you know, and, and uh, so, yeah, it's, you don't, it's like, we've been saying all along, you don't know how people are going to react. So sometimes you just don't tell them because you don't know how they're going to react. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's fine. You know, mm-hmm. if, if you, you're not ready to tell them today, you might be ready to tell right. them in a month or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, it's fine. And, <laughs> and yeah, not everybody needs to know. I mean, you know, it's, uh, you know, I've, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty open with all of that, but there are an awful lot of people who meet me and later on they'll say, oh my gosh, I had no idea. I'm like, well, yeah, whatever. Exactly. Yeah. We don't have the big C on our foreheads, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, well, oh my gosh, Julianne, this has been so much fun and, and I hope very inspirational and informative for, for people. So tell us a little bit about how you work with people and how they can connect with you and, and contact you. Sure. Um, well, you know, I work with people to kind of uh, sort through their whole plan okay, um, and do that pretty in pretty quick order because mm-hmm. you don't want to take mm-hmm. months and months to figure out how you're going to deal with us. Um, and then um, once we've done that, uh, some folks, you know, still want ongoing support. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll do that. And then I put uh, some information out on YouTube and other places mm-hmm. and write newsletters that just uh, give different tips and help people, mm-hmm. whether they've had cancer or any kind of health condition mm-hmm. or not, um, just to be healthy. Mm-hmm. So um, how do they find and- you? Okay. Um, well, uh, the best place is to just sign up for that newsletter. And okay. uh, my link for that is at bit.ly. So B-I-T dot L-Y slash small buster, no space in between. Um, just the word small, S-M-A-L-L, and then B-U-S-T-E-R. Um, and that starts with the three beginning uh, small ways of busting stress. Um, and I talked before about, you know, there's there's three different kinds of stress. And um, so that's a good way to get started. Okay, okay great. We'll put that in the, the show notes for folks. Um, so that will be fantastic for them. Um, you know, if they want to contact you personally, you know, how do they do that? Sure. Um, I have an email at hi at talk to, to julianne.com. Um, so just say hi. Um, and I, I love people's contributions and input as well as uh, requests. So I'm, I'm definitely here to sort of be a little bit of a clearinghouse for people who want to help contribute to this, uh, to addressing this problem. I love it. I love it. You know, and hopefully at some point it won't be a problem. Um, you know, we'll just be dealing with it. Um, but yeah, you know, probably not because this has been hundreds of thousands of years, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, exactly. um, but, but yeah, it's just, it's, it, what you're doing is, is such a great service. And, and I thank you for that. Um, as someone who's been on that end, you know, that, you know, it's, it is just absolutely fabulous what you do. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it, it really <laughs> feels good to be able to make a difference. Mm-hmm. So do you have any final thoughts that you want to leave everyone with? Uh, yes, you can live healthy and be successful at the same time. They are not in conflict with one another and it's not, it it might take quite a few steps to get there, but you don't have to do it all at once unless you wait until you have to do it all at once. So get started now (laughs) and make, make little changes and just, uh, allow for the possibility that life really actually can be easy. Oh my gosh, this has been so wonderful. And I can't wait to talk with you again, because I think this is an ongoing situation, problem, (laughs) issue. Um, (laughs) But I I think it is something that, that as, you know, as, as we go, you know, I would love to, to continue this discussion with you. And so we will, we'll definitely have you on again. But until then, I'm Deb Creer. I've been having one of the best conversations with Julianne Pena. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.